Good evening, everyone. Good evening, welcome. My name is Rebecca Villagran, and I am Councilwoman for District 3, this area, and I want to just welcome you all to this proposed budget public meeting tonight. Thank you so much. I know it's, it's a lot of sacrifice for you all to come out here, but I want to just to say that your presence here means a lot because it means the importance of this budget, this proposed budget that we're walking through. And I look forward to hearing about a lot of dialogue at all of the different tables and about your reports that you see are important to our city budget. I want to tell you this year, uh, it's very important. And there are a lot of challenging decisions that we're going to make. And I say we because I do not make these decisions alone. I want to uh, thank the city manager, Cheryl Scully, who is here, and the city staff, who will be here to just uh, take us through what's going to be happening. But I do thank you that you all represent just the great uniqueness that is San Antonio that shows us that we want to put um, our, our voice to where we see the priorities in our city. So again, I thank you for that. I want to take this time right now, and I do apologize, I haven't been able to go to every table yet, but I do want to do that, because I do want to meet all of you. Please don't think I'm not wanting to meet you, I do. I do want to go to every table. I do want to um, introduce my staff, uh, your staff, your District 3 staff, and we have Laura Barberena, the Chief of Staff right there, Ruben Lizalde, and then we have, uh, with the camera phone, Chris Villa right there, and Deborah Hosey, my senior executive secretary, and we have Angela Cardona and uh, Philip Garza right there, and seated, seated already is Ida Ramos, our senior center liaison. You can raise your hand. They're going to be here all evening to help answer any questions that you may have regarding the budget, but then also any questions outside of our conversation. And our conversation is going tonight is going to be focused on the budget, but we'll be happy to talk about anything else afterwards. Um, so I do, and you can meet any of them tonight, but also see them at the uh, Brooks City Base uh, field office that we have, uh, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5.30. So we're happy to have you all there. So at this time, I want to um, invite our city manager, Cheryl Scully, up uh, to just go through how the program will flow tonight. And I know you all are very eager. And please don't be shy about voicing your opinions. I know many of you are not. So I look forward to that. And again, please welcome Cheryl. Thank you, thank you Councilwoman. And thank you all for being here tonight. We're excited. I think this is our biggest meeting that we've had out in the council district. So we're excited that you're here. Yes, <laughs> District 3, woo -hoo. Don't tell the other districts I said that. Okay, so we have a number of staff here tonight. Eric Walsh, deputy manager, Wave Eric, Carlos Contreras, assistant city manager, Ed Belmaros, assistant manager, and our extraordinary budget director, Maria Villa Gomez, as well. And we have a staff member, oh, I'm sorry, Gloria Hurtado was hiding in the back, sitting down there, uh, assistant city manager as well. So we have a number of staff here, and I'm going to ask the staff real quickly to just stand up. We have a staffer at each table that is here from our executive team, and they're going to take notes, help facilitate your conversation, and I want you to know that of of all the comments we get tonight, uh, not only from District 3, we share all of the comments with all the council members so that they hear the variety of input that we get uh, from all the districts. And you know, we did four of these budget meetings in June before we started regionally around the city. And now we're doing five more now since I've presented the proposed budget. And this is the beginning of the process. Council members spent three hours this <coughs> afternoon uh, hearing presentations from the department heads about the budgets. They're deliberating, asking a lot of questions, and the input that you give us tonight will be helpful as well. So you're gonna meet all these staff members. They're going to help you in the process, and we're gonna show you just a short video that says here's what's in the proposed budget. Then we will ask you to identify those things that you think are most important for us to focus on as focus our resources 
um, for spending for the upcoming year. And then also tell us, because we our revenues are not growing as fast as the expenses, just to do what we're doing today, what do you think that we could do less of? or without. And I, I don't want to propose cuts within the budget. I mean, I, I don't relish that. In fact, it's very hard to decide, so what do we cut? But we have some fixed expenses, and just to do what we're doing today, next year, costs more than our revenue is increasing, which means we have to have a balanced budget by law, unlike other levels of government. We can't carry a deficit. We have to balance our budget every year. So to do that, we have to choose among the things we're doing, how do we best provide those services? And we have actually fewer city positions today than we did eight years ago, net. We've added nearly 500 police and fire personnel, and we've cut through attrition, no layoffs, but we've cut 1,350 civilian positions over the past seven years. And we've done that through placing people where positions were cut into other vacancies in the city organization. And we're trying to use technology to do things smarter. We're trying to simplify our business process so that we're delivering more service to you, but at less cost. So we're trying to do things differently and better. And if you think about it, to do that with fewer city positions today and yet we have more people to serve, N another 150,000 people in the community, more fire stations that we've added, more park land, more libraries, and yet we're doing that with fewer staff. So we're constantly looking at how do we provide the best level of service to you. But it's tough. Council members have very tough decisions to make. How do we, how do we balance the revenue to the expense? And the council gave me direction back in June at their goal setting session that they did not want to see an increase in the city's property tax rate. So to not increase that rate, then how do we balance? That means you have to cut because it, it, back in May when we presented the budget, we estimated that our revenues would grow in 2014 by about two and a half percent, but expenses were going up three and a half percent. And we know we don't want to cut the number of police and fire personnel, as I said, for a growing community. We've actually added staff in that area. So how, how do we then balance that? that is, that's a tough, tough thing for the city council members to do. So I know that many of you want to be here to say, don't cut this, don't cut that. But we also need to hear from you then, then what can we reduce in the budget? And that's important to us to have, have that kind of input. So the run of show tonight is to see this bit video that really just lays out the basics of our budget. And then we'll break into our discussion groups and ask you to identify those three things that are most important for us to focus on. And then the three things that you think we could do less of that you'd be willing to see us give up. And then designate one of your residents at your table to be the spokesperson. And after about 30 minutes of conversation, then we'll ask each table to report out on those three things that are most important and the three things that you would like to see us reduce to help us balance the budget. Does that make sense? Okay, we'll ask our video people to go ahead and enroll this short short video and then we'll break into our discussion groups and the staff that are at each of the tables will help you and we'll walk around and answer questions you might have as well. Thank you again for coming tonight. Hello, I'm City Manager Cheryl Scully. The fiscal year 2014 proposed budget is balanced and allows the city to continue to provide quality services to the community while making the tough decisions to keep the city financially sound. The fiscal year 2014 proposed budget focuses on reducing administrative costs and prioritizes public safety, street maintenance, sidewalks, and drainage improvements. 
The proposed budget reflects policy direction from Mayor Castro, City Council members, and valuable input from the recent community budget hearings held in June of every quadrant of the city. This video was developed to provide a summary of the fiscal year 2014 proposed budget and to enhance understanding of city services and how they're financed. It also highlights areas where the city has been able to recommend budget cuts while maintaining quality service levels to meet community needs. Over the next few weeks, the City Council will carefully consider the proposals included in the proposed budget. Mayor Castro, City Council members, and I look forward to your input prior to the adoption of the City's budget on September 12, 2013. We appreciate your interest in the City of San Antonio's proposed fiscal year 2014 budget. We are committed to keeping San Antonio financially strong and to making San Antonio a dynamic and healthy community for you and your family. The City is committed to continually improving services for residents of San Antonio and nurturing an environment for future growth and prosperity. Each day, the city's workforce is in the community, working to maintain city streets, protect you and your family, preserve the beauty and integrity of your neighborhoods, and offer services and programs that can enrich the quality of life for all residents. The fiscal year 2014 proposed budget is balanced as required by law and does not include a city property tax rate increase. The general fund, which is the city's largest operating fund, totals 989 million, less than 1% higher than last year. The budget is transparent and reflects City Council policy direction and valuable input from the community. In June of this year, five community budget hearings were held across the city to obtain service priorities from residents before the proposed budget was prepared. Following the community budget hearings, City Council annually establishes priorities and the proposed budget recommendations reflect that input. This year, the high priority services identified are public safety, streets, sidewalks and drainage as our city core services. Your city budget is more efficient and since 2007, the city has reduced the general fund budget by nearly 88 million and has eliminated 1,633 civilian positions with no layoffs. During the same period, the city added 307 police officers and 167 firefighters, reflecting community and city council priorities. The FY 2014 proposed budget reduces 13 million in the general fund and a total of 279 positions in all funds. In the general fund five-year financial forecast presented in May of 2013, Revenues were projected to increase at a slower pace than expenditures, necessitating adjustments to be made to the budget. The proposed FY 2014 budget presented to the City Council on August 8th is balanced and reflects the City Council priorities of no city property tax rate increase, budget reductions, and some fee increases. Included in the budget are $5 million in proposed revenue adjustments in the general fund, primarily in EMS transport fees, hazmat inspection fees, and recreational fees. The proposed budget also maintains the city's financial reserves at $89 million, or 9% of general fund appropriations. With the efficiencies added in this year's proposed budget, general fund expenses increased less than 1%. One of the top priorities recommended by the community and the City Council is public safety. The Police Department has applied for a Communities Organized for Public Service hiring grant that will allow for the hiring of additional police officers for three years. The budget includes $307,000 for a city match if the grant is awarded in October 2013 for 10 officers. $1.3 million is also included in the budget to add more police in-car video and other equipment. The fire department provides quality fire prevention and suppression, emergency medical service, and rescue operations to city residents. The proposed budget enhances these efforts by adding three full-time hazmat inspectors to improve inspections, as well as $3 million for the replacement of two hazmat trucks and other fire equipment. Improvement and maintenance of streets and sidewalks continues to be a high priority for residents. The proposed budget continues funding the Infrastructure Maintenance Program at $54 million. This amount includes $35 million to improve streets, 
and 8.5 million for sidewalks. This is 2.5 million more than in 2013, and 4.5 of the 8.5 million will go to improve sidewalks to schools. 3.5 million will be used for drainage improvements, and the final 7 million is for pavement markings, alleyways, traffic signals, and bike facility improvements. In 2012, voters approved a $596 million bond program that includes city-wide improvements for streets, bridges, and sidewalks, drainage and flood control, parks, libraries, and public safety facilities. During fiscal year 2014, many of these projects will be designed and approximately half will begin construction. The FY 2014 budget includes $1.25 million for initiatives to revitalize and improve neighborhoods throughout San Antonio. This amount includes the Renew SA program, Ciclovia, and the Fit Pass program. Also included is funding for animal care services to continue to perform 26,500 spay-neuter surgeries and maintain a 75% live release rate. Code continues to be a priority in 2014, and no service reductions for code enforcement are recommended in the budget to ensure a continued focus on improving neighborhoods. San Antonio Senior Centers provide daily health, fitness, and nutrition support to residents 60 years and older. The FY 2014 budget continues to make these services a priority and includes $1.5 million in funding for the expansion of senior centers in Districts 2, 6, and 7. The 2014 proposed budget includes $3.5 million for economic development incentives, $1.75 million is dedicated for inner city incentives, and $1.75 million is dedicated to citywide initiatives. A key piece in developing the city's budget is making decisions to maintain a strong financial position while providing quality service delivery. The budget reduces $13 million by streamlining services, focusing on community priorities, and reducing administrative overhead. On average, non-public safety departments and the general fund reduced costs by 5%. This year's budget reductions include leveraging technology and process improvements in municipal court to reduce the time customers spend at court by 30%, while reducing costs by 914000 The budget also reduces $1.7 million in administrative overhead which includes a 50% reduction to travel and other line item budgets, as well as 11 administrative positions. The city will also achieve savings by transitioning services provided at the link centers to existing facilities, including Development Services One Stop, select libraries, and other city facilities. Service modifications totaling $1.3 million include realignment of parks landscape and sanitation maintenance schedules and consolidating 10 open play community centers with low attendance with other full service centers in close proximity. The budget includes a change in the outdoor swimming pool program that is anticipated to save $310,000. This proposal expands the existing six-day-per-week operation of outdoor swimming pools to a seven-day-per-week operation by limiting the number of days each pool is open. Delegate agency funding is proposed to be reduced by 5%, consistent with the average reduction of non-public safety city departments. Funding for Haven for Hope, however, remains at the FY 2013 budget levels, this proposal saves 630000 Solid waste collection services are supported by a user fee collected monthly through your electric bill. The budget includes funding to support a subscription curbside recycling program for organic recycling and adding two additional neighborhood drop-off collection centers. An increase to the solid waste monthly rate of $0.50 cents is recommended in the 2014 proposed budget, raising the cost to $19.93 per month. Now that you've learned about the proposed fiscal year 2014 budget, we want to hear from you. We encourage you to attend any of the community budget hearings. There are five area-wide community meetings held across the city and two at the city council chambers. As required by law, the city budget is scheduled to be adopted on September 12th. The city's new fiscal year begins October 1st. Visit the city's website at www.sanantonio.gov to learn more about the proposed fiscal year 2014 budget and the public input process. You can watch this video again on TVSA, the city's government access channel. 
As you can see, the city's fiscal year 2014 proposed budget is balanced and continues to provide the community with high quality services and a strong financial position. Um, two things, uh, a couple things that I didn't get to mention before, but that I wanted to do right now before you start your work at your tables is to um, recognize two former council members in the audience. I want to, uh, two former District 3 council members, Tony Morehouse back there, and Councilwoman Deborah Guerrero, uh, also SAISD trustee. Thank uh, you all both so much for being here, as well as all of you. And I do want to just give so much thanks for all the hard work work of Maria Villa Gomez in the budget department and all of her staff. Um, nobody was on a break with that group over there, so I thank you so much. Now, um, I, the facilitators at each table will go through and again, um, go through what projects you all will be doing at the table. There are um, some questions that they're going to pose to you. So we're looking forward to hearing some lively conversations and hearing all your reports back to all of us. So thank you very much. And we have how much time? Okay, so we're going to go until 7 o'clock. So let's get to work. Thank you so much. And um, I understand that table six is ready to go. Uh, so if the person who is reporting could please stand up and go ahead and report out. Remember, you only have two minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman. I'm Reba Malone from District 3. And let me get out of the way, <laughs> cover up things. The three things that we feel could be eliminated and save us some money is number one, we don't want to see Fiesta increased because that is trash, police officers, you name it, it's going to cost the city more money. Number two, the table, they wanted medical insurance and uniforms that the city employees and so forth help pay for that. And number three, not give abatements. Now the things that, now the things um, that we are really sold on is code compliance, streets and sidewalks, pets, animal care. We want the libraries and parks keep and maintain what we have. And last but not least, we want the city to stay out of the streetcar and rail business. Thank you. And let me just say, we had people from District 2, 3, 5, 9, and 10 at our table, so they're coming from all parts of the city, and I think we did a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Malone. I think right over here, we're going to come right here. Uh, what table is this? Table two? Okay, go ahead. I think you had wow. pretty, <laughs> I think that's a little high. Go ahead, please. He's, he's tall enough already. I'm uh, Jim. Uh, our group came up with our priority list was uh, libraries, was to maintain current levels and use advanced technologies because we felt that would actually save some money uh, using that advanced technology. <laughs> Residential streets maintain and improve and I, we also uh, talk about technology. Maybe change the technology of how we put those roads down where they actually last longer. Maybe more expensive on the front end, but then it would also, you know, they'd last a lot longer. Uh, Sidewalks uh, towards school, top priority. Public safety, uh, fire and police technology. Maintain, the big issue with us was to maintain the CRT officers, the crisis response teams. I think that's huge uh, to maintain the community outreach. Uh, fifth was neighborhood revitalization, expand and improve development. Now cuts, cuts in revenue. Uh, we, we, we all sat at our table and we realized a lot of times the revenues are, are way too conservative on CPS revenues. And we'd like more realistic numbers. 
And also to add in that 4.7% that was just uh, approved rate increase here not too long ago here at council. Consolidating some city and county responsibilities. I believe the city is better at doing a lot of things in the county. I hope there's no county people in here. And I think we could absorb a lot of that infrastructure. I think we could do that. Uh, our group did. Tax incentives reduced, correct? Uh, and this is something we, we kind of brainstormed around is provide city services to uh, smaller communities, i.e. Alamo Heights, Balcones Heights, be it trash, be it police services. I think it would be a huge savings for them and I think it would be an opportunity for us as a city to take over some of those services and actually make some revenue, generate some revenue. That's it with our group. Thank you. Thank you very much. And just a point of clarification, that CPS rate increase has not gone to council yet. That's still moving on. So thank you very much. I think right over here, table one. Thank you. Table one, and we're number one here because we're all close, cohesive, and not, not. But Reba, you stole my thunder. Right. Anyway. Oh, she, she stole more than that. I better, I better be careful. <laughs> Look with me quickly. I think we have a cause and effect situation here, pretty much so. We look at the tax incentive and abatements. Then we turn around, we got problem with water, we got problem with this, we got problem with that. Why do we keep giving the abatements to people come in and do this and they're here about a year and a half instead of five years and they're gone. So take care, cut back on that. The streetcar allocation, dami, 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 no way no. Okay? All right, property taxes, they say no increase. People look at this for a moment. Well, I do not like to pay any more taxes than you do. Look who it benefit from them. It's the economic level, who benefits most for the no tax increase? All right? And for every time you get a utility bill, you got another fee added to it, another fee added to it. Those fees are a nuisance to the bookkeeping, the administration. How much of that money is going to administration to post all that? So it's a fact of shortage of revenue, income revenue. So if they increase the tax, property taxes, then we could do away with these fees for this and fees for that. Right? Yes, you could. Okay. Then I'm going to look here for neighborhood improvements. Yes, keep our parks, keep our streets clean. We're all strongly, strongly in favor of that. And pets, I'll take one strong stand on pets. I speak collectively and not individually, but if you don't care enough for your pet to take care of it, I sure don't want to take care of it. I don't want to spend public money to take care of your pets. So we can go on that. But anyway, those pretty well are highlights there, but we are one other thing here. They talk about freeze the salary. Well, I'm going to say that that's one big figure there, and if we can do that for a short time, then I feel like we might be able to get over a hump. Okay? Thank you Thank for your time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. What table is next? Okay. Right over there. I'll get y'all next. Okay, we're going to go over our priorities first, and we felt that police and firemen are very, are very important. I mean, that we do need them, uh, the police to protect us personally, and of course, uh, the firemen to come and protect our property, so we do need that. However, we felt that there should be a salary cap and benefits. I mean, there, there should be a cap somewhere. You just can't keep getting a raise every year. I mean, we don't. We've done without a raise for years. And then uh, I think we need to review the union contracts. And when they come up for, I think they're coming up pretty quickly, we need to sit down with them and have a serious conversation with them. 
I mean, supposedly, what, in 2030, they're not, is the fire and police is going to be 100% of our budget, according to our city manager. So I definitely think that these people should sit down and be willing to negotiate, and maybe you can't get a, con a raise every year. Absolutely not. Uh, let's see, we need to sacrifice now so that we can have for later. Um, let's see, we need to find an appropriate balance now and avoid future problems. And I, I think that's when the unions, you need to learn to compromise. Uh, and another priority of ours, of course, is streets. We feel that our streets are very necessary and we need them. So therefore, that should be a priority. Animal care services, we need that for our own safety. And of course, we want uh, owners to take care of their animals. And of course, uh, we have a problem. We talk to him about the problem and hopefully he'll do something about it. Dogs, cats are being dumped everywhere and we need, to, we need this taken care of. So those are our priorities. Monday. And uh, as far as maintaining or decreasing some of these things, we felt that we should review all the agencies and review the bonus programs. I mean, we need to sit down with all these agencies and find out uh, what exactly are they doing for the city? How, how are they spending the money? And maybe we can consolidate some of these smaller departments or if we don't need them, let's get rid of them. And then the downtown development, you know, here we have all these trails, new trails, bicycles. Uh, you know what? I'd rather have somebody come fix my street than have all this extra stuff. I mean, uh, Ken told me, he says, oh, but it attracts tourists. And tourists pay a lot of money. Well, wonderful. But what does it do for us? We're the citizens. Uh, the river walk, the benches all out there. I mean, here we have a flood and they all washed away, but okay, we'll find city money somewhere to repair all of that. So I think sometimes we have our priorities totally mixed up. The city council is, the, in my opinion, we need protection when we need it. We need our, the fire department to come and help us. We need our safety to be taken care of. I don't care about the tourists. I'm sorry, I don't. I mean, if I want to go downtown, I'll make it downtown. But I don't need a fancy trail and all of that. If I want to exercise, I can walk up down the, my street in my neighborhood. But I need that street protected. I want those dogs off of there. Thank you. And uh, anyway. That's okay. what we think we really need to look at. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, let's go on to this side. Okay, table four. Thank you. Okay, we, uh, is this on? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, we came up with uh, our first priority was uh, street repairs and reconstruction. Uh, a lot of times they come in and repair this, just uh, do a top job on it and, and not really reconstruct it, you have to dig it out deep where uh, the, the ground or whatever you call it is, is not uh, properly treated so that the street will last. More sidewalks and curbs, a lot of these neighborhoods around town, not just this area, but all around town, everywhere they, they need to be uh, uh, updated. Another thing is uh, animal care, stray animals. Uh, like uh, the, we like to see, uh, what was that again? Uh, uh, like uh, stray dogs, they're, they should be taken care of. Uh, if you own one, take care of him. Don't let him just stray around and go into different, different houses, different uh, yards and uh, mess up the yards and maybe pit bulls that are dangerous. Uh, that's another thing that uh, we came up with, and another one was uh, youth social services. There's too many uh, kids that are have nothing to do, no place to go, so they go out and uh, do graffiti, uh, which is uh, costing the city some money there to clean it up. I don't know if actually the city does go out and clean it up, but we clean up our own graffiti when we see it. Uh, they should have some kind of... Uh, 
recreation center for them like, uh, like they do for the senior citizens. It's uh, some place for them to go and, and uh, spend time there to, so they can become better citizens. Okay, and then we have uh, revenues. How to develop more revenue? Well, one way would be the uh, liquor by the drink taxes. Increase that, liquor by the drink taxes. That would not only get, uh, do some more revenue, but it might keep some drunks off the street at the same time and prevent uh, accidents. Uh, what is this? Uh, reductions. Reductions? Well, we don't uh, especially care for uh, street cars in downtown area. Uh, what is that going to do for us? It, it may help the tourists, but not, uh, not the citizens here. Uh, another thing is uh, contributions to the developers that come up from out of town that uh, they say, okay, you give me a tax break and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we're going to hire 500 people. And, and, uh, but I think they should pay their, pay their fair share of taxes just like everybody else does and not give them that, uh, that uh, uh, cut, you know, that, that break. So that, those are the things we came up with. Thank you Thank so you. very much. Thank you. Now let's go back to this side over here. This table. Table 13. You'll be next. Actually, George really wanted to do this, but he bowed to me. Uh, the priority areas, public safety, balanced park growth, funded by developers. We feel like there should be an ordinance that when a developer puts in a area that they provide the parkland and develop the park instead of the city. Streets and drainage, code enforcement, and animal control. Uh, the way that we felt we could make some reductions or raise some revenue, opportunity to consolidate services between county and city or outsource services, utilize green strategies to reduce costs, and reconsider tax incentives. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Thank you, table 13. Okay, table seven, here we go. I think I'm gonna start by saying that uh, it was suggested that the council members or the city uh, employees, they should need to take a tour of our neighborhoods to see for themselves the concerns of the community. We do plan to cut efficiencies uh, if they're concerns that really can, we can do without. Eliminate the streetcar project, number one. Cut the seven million that's on the books for bike lanes, marking, signals, and facilities. A better coordination of government entities, and we need to cap the annual races across the board. Our um, Bodie Center on Rigsby apparently has been targeted for closing down that is a very touchy subject for us because of our children that are attending schools at the Baptist Temple at Highland Park Elementary. And they are expected to walk all the way to Southside Lions after they get out of school for any kind of protection, adult protection. We do feel that that is a real danger for our area. Our children, are, we need to be considerate of them uh, the reasoning that was given to us is that we don't have enough services. I would like to suggest, and our board was a consensus there, that make Bodie Center a senior citizen uh, service. And I think they're looking for one, and we would like to be considered for that. I would like to follow up in the next few weeks before the budget is completed. We do want to improve sidewalks and merge the bike lanes. Uh, now increase San Antonio Police domestic uh, violence uh, case management 
and the social workers. We do need more of those. And that's about it, but thank you. Thank you, Ms. Alcedo. Thank you very much. All right, over here, this table over here. These are all wonderful, thank you so much. Okay. My name's Elizabeth and I'm table eight. And what we consider most important in either maintaining or increasing is the disability access for sidewalk for the disabled people. And then we wanted to maintain or increase our Project Quest funding and keep up the CRT funding with the SAPD. Our cuts, we propose with the tax abatements and the city executive salaries. Last but not least was the SAPD and San Antonio Fire Department uniforms and supplies to be reduced or, you know, they start paying for them for some part of their own, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Okay, we'll come back over here. So, okay, there you go. Are you speaking? Table 11. First of all, I'm not here voluntarily as a speaker tonight. <laughs> but uh, the wisdom of this table was that I should speak. And I went outside and I conferred with the moon. <laughs> and it said, you can go home a coward or you can go home as a man that stole the truth. Wow. So I am going to try to do that tonight. Our table says that we should wait, do, do not waive any development fees, do not grant any tax abatements for new companies or developers, <laughs> cut and or freeze executive salaries, bonuses, and a lot of that was directed at city public service and the water board and uh, not so much really at our city staff, I don't think. Uh, the, the outside agencies, that are city agencies, but get away with a little bit more. Increase the transparency and ethics uh, conflicts that arise, dealing like with the streetcar people where the chairman of the VIA board happened to find a building 100 feet away from the station. So, And now on the uh, don't cut public safety in streets, especially our community response teams that deal with domestic violence. That is a very critical part of life today, and any reduction in that service would be harmful to the ladies of our great city. Parks, libraries, and senior centers, we need more. Sidewalks and drainage, we need more. And historical preservations of some buildings. I uh, want to take the opportunity to thank all of the people from my home to come tonight. Uh, I'm a retired policeman, and uh, your comments uh, were taken. And uh, uh, I will say that without the proper wages and benefits, you will not be able to attract the quality of police officers we have on the streets protecting all of us tonight. And the ladies and gentlemen of our safe division that provide our council people with, such a, with a greater service, I think, and more able to con control your, your desires. So, Heffy, thank you for the job you do. Thank the back table, too. Appreciate your help. Thank you, Mr. Thank Clancy. You. Thank you. Thanks, sir. All right. Um, where are we now? Where are we going to go now? Um, how about table 12? I feel honored to be the speaker. These ladies elected me here. I asked them to because this is their area and their neighborhood. But anyway, this is what the table came up with. We uh, have some areas that we want to uh, reduce fees on, and we want to reduce the uh, EMS fees. We want them to come down. They're too high. 
Uh, we've kind of got ours mixed up, so I'm going to go how Mr. Jacks wrote them down. Uh, he wrote down we want to increase uh, parking and uh, garage fees. I'm not totally in agreement myself, but that's that's what the consensus of the table was. So Can that's, you lift it a little higher, That's what's please? on here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The other one yeah. is to increase... Uh, the fee on the organic collection that the solid waste department does, if it, they can increase that in order to help our solid waste department. Um, we, of course, want sidewalks. We want the sidewalks, we want new ones, and we want to improve sidewalks in this area, in this neighborhood. Uh, we want more code co enforcement. The code compliance needs some help, and we need our code officers, and we want them. So we want more animal control, not a, a not necessarily a budget increase, but we want the animals controlled. We've got a big problem with animals all over the doggone place, so they want more animal control. Uh, the number one issue, of course, all of us sitting at this table were sort of seniors, and we want to increase the senior services in San Antonio for nutrition and transportation. We have many, many seniors that need a helping hand. We want to keep our professional salaries, and I think we were sort of thinking in the lines of CPS and Water Board too, but we want to keep our professional salaries the same, no increase this year. No increase for professional, not, not the lay people, not the people that collect the garbage and work on the streets, but for the professional salaries. Uh, we want to keep the library staff uh, as is, a library area. The libraries are very important, and so we want to keep the libraries as they are. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Over here. Good evening. I'm with table number nine. All right, we talked it over, and this is what we came up with. I need to see it. Our priorities parks, parks and rec, strong supporters of the parks. We feel there needs to be more public private partnerships at the underutilized venues. Parks and Recs are in charge of. Obviously, don't close the parks. We love them all. Take good care of them. Um, and on that note, for animal control, more public-private ventures to offset that, like the one with the Animal Defense League that the city is partnered with. I'm not sure if you all are familiar with that, but you know the city is incentivized a private company to help control that, and they've built a big facility. So more things like that to keep that going. Um, libraries, we feel, uh, you know, with updated technology, they can be more efficient, and we can save a little bit of money there. I'm not saying, you know, close any of them down, but streamline it so it's more efficient, save some of that money that we can spread out elsewhere. We believe in raising taxes and reducing everything. <laughs> Everybody's, that's property tax. All right. Here's a good one. Fiesta. Somebody mentioned this earlier. We could save a ton of money if we can round up some volunteers to help clean up trash after Fiesta. Uh, if we can do something like that, we, we, could, we could save a, the city could save quite a bit of money in, in that cleanup because I know we spend a ton cleaning that up. Uh, yeah, same, in other, other events, other city events and stuff like that. Raising volunteers to help clean up. And then corporate responsibility, specifically for events, cleanup, private, you know, just need, need more of it, need, need more help from them. They're, they're raking in the money, so we, we, can, we can use their help. And then recycling, incentivize recycling with a deposit fee on glasses and what was it? plastics. That's what we got. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to jump back up here to table three because they haven't gone yet, so we'll, we'll go right over here. Hello, I'm Jessica, and I'm speaking for table three. 
Um, the few, well, some of the priorities that we recognized as a table were uh, public safety, um, public works, parks and recreation, um, which some of you guys mentioned also. Uh, we also wanted to keep Project Quest funding. I saw a few questers also wearing the maroon shirts. And then um, we, we don't want to see a fee for interlibrary loans. Um, we think that libraries are very important in the city also. Um, a few areas that we thought um, could be reduced are the center city development. We don't want to see um, money going there that shouldn't. Um, and the area um, of, po of police and the fire department, we thought maybe that um, they could pay for um, benefits. Um, you know, of course, they would be covered as employees, but for their dependents, they should be required to pay a fee like everyone else that works us. Um, and we thought uh, some money could be saved in paving alleyways. There are a few um, areas that we noticed uh, that alleyways were paved, and we thought that was just a waste of money. Um, so that was one area that we thought could be cut. And I think that's it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, we're going to go back there. Okay, can you back up a little bit? Okay, we, we had uh, our three reduction areas and five top priorities. I don't know if we were supposed to do three of each, but we had too many priorities. Uh, under, we, we agree with almost everybody in the room that the tax abatement situation is need to be cut out. Because if they can't provide jobs and be plentiful in their production of helping the city, why are we giving them money in tax breaks? It's ridiculous. Cut them all out. If they're not doing a good job for the city, just don't give it to them. Even ones that already have it. If they didn't do a good job, if they're not providing for our city employment, why help them out? Take it away from them. Okay. And then on uh, going lean and uh, cutting government waste, we thought that maybe, you know, the fire and uh, all of that is such a huge chunk of our budget. And it's, we need them. We definitely need them. And we don't want to cut any policeman or any fireman. But why do they have to buy a new car every year? I mean, we don't buy new cars every year. Our cars last. Uh, I drive in 2004, and it's working good. You know, why can't they have it for four years, five years, until it's cost efficient, to, it's breaking so much, then get a new one? Why every year? That makes no sense to me. And our table agrees. OK. And then also, looking at the public safety budget, we, could we create maybe um, some oversight to make sure that they're using all this huge chunk of the budget correctly, some volunteers to see that they're not wasting anything? You know, because that's a lot of money. And who, who watches over that money for us? You know, somebody needs to volunteer so that they don't, they don't have a vested interest in it. OK. Creating a, a, what was this? Creating a watch group. That's what I just said. Okay. All right. Uh, put a streetcar project on hold, please. We don't need a streetcar. We need to be able to have the kids that don't have any money swim for free. Why are we you know, going to charge these little children money to go swimming when they're so poor they can't go anymore? I mean, maybe in the neighborhoods where they have a lot of money, you can charge them. But, you know, in the poor neighborhoods, why do we want to charge the children to go swim, and what are they going to do then? They're going to go spray the, the cars and, you know, go have, turn on the fire hose, and then we can't put out our fires? You know, we need to not do that to the, the poor people in the city. Okay, and then, um, let's see. Keep the libraries. Our children need to be our number one priority, and we need to make sure that they are educated for our future. Who's going to take care of us when we're old? They're going to grow up if they can't read and they can't do stuff. We're going to be in trouble, you know. So we really need to look out for them so they can look out for us. And people that, that don't have an education and that haven't gotten, they drop out of school and things, we need to have programs for them to raise their, raise their intelligence levels so they can contribute more to society. You know, at the libraries, more things for grown-ups, too. And teach them how to use a computer if they don't know how. Free. Don't charge them for that. You know, get the people into the technologies that are useful for their lives and our lives. You know, make us be a more productive country and city. Um, let's see. Funding for, oh, and don't you dare do away with those mobile libraries. I mean, if they can't get to the library and they cut out the mobile library, how are they going to get books? How are they going to get smart? We don't need dumb people, you know. Okay. All right, now, let's see. Funding for more green space and community-based. You know, the city kind of tears down houses, things that are, you know, 
abandoned and whatever, and it's weeds, and then people, you know, do drugs. And why can't we turn those into little bitty parks? You know, put in a slide, a swing set, put a little gravel around, a little mulch, so that the kids in the neighborhood can walk to some place to play. Why do we? Why do we leave it a break a lot of grass growing? You know, turn it into something that they can walk to, that they can be close by. And there's a lot of them all over the city. Why make a huge, gigantic park that you have to drive to and most of those people don't have a car? You know? Why can't we have little, little big parks and all these city-owned properties, you know? Would that be that expensive? A little swing in the slides, you know? Not, not too bad, huh? And then how about, let's see, what do we have here? I forgot where I was. Who's on first? No. Uh, Increased lighting. The li oh, the lighting. Downtown. They're putting in those new lights they say are more green, but if, if, it's, if we're going to get hit over the head because it's so dark, it's not going to be worth it. You know, This guy says over here, I want to be able to go stand at the bus stop at night and not have somebody go, quonk, because I didn't see they're coming. You know? I can't even tell what color clo co clothes they got or what color the car is driving down the street over there. Is it green, black? I don't know. I can, blue? I can't tell. It's too dark. And people with old eyes like me, we can't see very good. We need bright lights, you know, bright lights. So, you know, old people, we can't see they're good. Okay. Um, let's see. We got uh, more practical green initiatives down at the grassroots level instead of these big old wonderful uh, solar panels up here for what good does that do me or, you know, you. Let's have some initiatives at the green level that are down where the people can use them. Educate the people in the community and in our neighborhoods instead of doing it for the Hyatt Regency or something, you know. And let's see. How about uh, keeping our community centers for the youth and the elderly, you know, let's keep them open. Don't you dare close those things. We need that. And for the youth and for the, for the seniors, maybe they could work together and learn from each other. Wouldn't that be wonderful? You know, maybe put those cell phones away and, and, you know, not drive with them. Maybe we could give giant tickets for anybody caught using a cell phone in the car. If you don't turn it off when you drive, you get a ticket. Wouldn't that be good? Or what was the other one? If they live too far from where they work, they have to pay more tax. So they won't pollute the air. You know, The further away they live, the more taxes they have to pay. Thank or if they you. don't carpool, we can cut it down if they carpool. You know? Thank or if they you. ride the bus, they get a big tax break. You know? <laughs> Thank you so much. You had a great table there, too. Most definitely, Mr. Hodge is there. We're going to go back here to table number 14 now. Another uh, great table back here. That's a very difficult act to uh, follow. Uh, but uh, my name is Terrence Hickman. Good evening. I'm from the David Scott YMCA. And we had a very engaged group this uh, evening that represented four different districts. Um, in cuts, animal care was big on our list. Um, the thought was we give a lot of emphasis to animals and not to seniors. Uh, public safety in the terms of administrative overhead and salaries. Incentives in tax abatement, restructure of that was, uh, was our agreement in our area. Our priorities were transportation for seniors, senior services. Allow seniors to have transportation to get to senior centers so they can have a good meal for the day. Uh, own versus lease of city facilities, dog park in District 3, three was brought up. One of our top areas was early childhood education, for sure, and crisis response team ended our uh, conversation. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Our last uh, table for the evening here at our last public meeting out in the community is table number 10. Thank you, ladies. Um, hi, my name is Victoria, and I'm a senior, we are senior Girl Scouts. Um, some things on our list of higher priorities would be Project Quest, which is a very um, great program for the community in the city of San Antonio, um, to maintain sidewalks and streets, because um, that's very good, too. Um, and our third thing was Girl Scouts and other community programs for the youth and as well for the senior citizens. Um, yeah, so those are on our top priorities. 
And things on our lower priorities would be the downtown streetcar. Um, <laughs> because there's a bus, the bus is downtown and such. And something that came up in conversation in our table was recycling and the fact that we have to pay a fee or like a pretty high fee for recycling every month when we should recycle anyway because it's good for the world. <laughs> yeah. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. And thank you for participating. Thank you. thank you for closing us out. I appreciate it. Um, and I do want to thank all of you again for being here. Your input has given uh, me and the city staff, I know, a lot to take back and to look at and to see where everything is right now on the list. So this is the last public meeting in the community. We do have two more public meetings, thank you, um, that are citywide. The one is Wednesday, August 28th at the City Council Chambers, and then um, Wednesday, September 4th, again, at the City Council Chambers. Your input is critical, and I will tell you, some of the things I've heard tonight, I hadn't heard before. So I really appreciate it because your input just has created that uh, creativity and that innovation that we need for San Antonio. And that's why I love serving where I do because of all of you. So again, I wanna thank uh, the city manager. Thank you, Maria. And thank you all again. You all made this possible. Good night, be safe.